the dirty secrets of RV camping. There are a lot of them, and they're the type of things that an RV dealer won't tell you whenever you go to purchase that RV. But we're here to spread the word of these dirty secrets, so stay tuned. Welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much for being here today. Big shout out to RVMasterclass.com. It's a program that we're a part of where we help teach people how to boondock better, how to buy the right RV, and transition into full-time RV life. Check out RVMasterclass.com. But today's video is all about the dirty secrets of RV camping. RV vacations are exploding this year. Everyone wants to take one because it's the best way that they feel safe to get out there and explore America. We have to agree but it's not all roses out there. There are dirty secrets of RV camping that are just a way of RV life and no one is gonna sell you these things whenever you are buying that RV. The first dirty secret of RVing is that you have to deal with poop. That is the way it is. In your sticks and bricks life, poop goes right down the toilet and we never think of it again. In an RV life, that is not how it works. It goes into a holding tank underneath your RV and then once a week, once every few days, you have to empty that holding tank. And in that emptying process, a lot of bad things can happen. We recommend having a very good black water hose for this process because if you go cheap on that, you might get a little explosion and it can get all over you. So no one talks about the poop aspect of RV life, but it exists, it's real. If you're on RV vacation and using that RV 24 hours a day, you're gonna be dealing with it on a regular basis. The next dirty secret of RVing is that you might have bad neighbors. This is more common than you can even imagine. With it being so busy this year, everyone trying to book a reservation, most people are staying at RV parks, national parks, state parks. These campgrounds, while they can be beautiful, they're not known for being so spacious. Some of the things you're gonna have to deal with with a bad RV neighbor are excessively loud music, barking dogs, people walking through your site, someone smoking cigarettes, someone creating a bad campfire that is seeping all, every ounce of smoke into your RV. This is just the way it is. And if you're gonna be staying at a crowded RV park or a crowded campground, it is likely that a scenario like this where you have a bad neighbor is going to happen. Again, it's not something that that RV salesman is gonna tell you about. It's something that we can teach you to avoid in the future, but it might happen to you on your first trip out if you're not doing all the front end research. The next dirty secret about RVing across the country is that RVs break very often. If you bought a new RV, there's a chance that it already has a warranty issue or a recall. This is the way it is, and I hate that it's this way, but RVers from the last 20 years have come to accept this fact. It might be something as simple as an electrical outlet or a LED light, but it might be a big issue like your air conditioner or your propane fridge. There is no lack of things that are breaking because quite honestly, you're taking an RV down the road, driving 60, 65 miles an hour, it's an earthquake every day you move that thing. Things are rattling around, shaking, breaking. It's bound to create issues with your RV. You need to be aware of that before you buy the RV. Have a talk with the dealer or just buy an extended warranty if you're buying used and understand that things are gonna break and you're gonna have to deal with them possibly in the middle of your trip. Next up for Dirty Secrets is Apple Maps. If you're gonna plan an RV trip and you think that all you have to do is insert your GPS in the Apple map or even Google map for that consideration, you might be in for a bad time. Here's the deal. These maps are built for cars. Their ETAs are built for cars. Their routes are built for cars. They're not routing for your RV specifically. This is exactly why we use RV Trip Wizard. We can enter in our Airstream specs in the RV specific travel planner. It'll help us avoid any low hanging bridges, any steep mountain passes, uh, dirt roads. It's very important if you have a large RV specifically that routing specifically for the size of that RV is important. Please don't just rely on Google or Apple Maps. You could end up in a bad situation. The next dirty secret and one of the worst in our opinions is that RV parks are so expensive. We thought naively whenever we got into RV life that if we're buying an RV, we're hauling our house around, we could expect to pay 
maybe 20 bucks a night for an RV park. And that was probably the biggest misconception we had when we hit the road. We've paid over $100 a night for RV parks. It's not a habit we like. It's not something we enjoy doing, but RV parks are expensive. State parks might be a little less expensive, but it is hard to stay under 35 bucks a night if you're out there trying to make a campground reservation. That's just the way it is, and you can spend a lot more money than you might potentially have budgeted. So know that RV parks are expensive. Again, this is something that dealers aren't gonna tell you. They'll tell you about the joys of traveling in an RV. But yes, you are gonna be paying a lot of money per night if you plan on staying with full hookups every night or even partial hookups. One thing that we like to help guide the viewers with is that there is something called free camping. We take advantage of free camping quite often. The first few years we were out on the road, we took advantage of free camping so much that we spent less than $1,000 a year over the course of a year of full-time RV living to pay for RV parks. So free camping exists, it is awesome. Right here, you can find the 20 best free campsites in America, top left corner of this screen. Click on that, discover the free camping options. You can avoid the RV park expenses. Hope you like this video, guys. We'll see you next time, later on.